My dearly beloved in Christ, I've often told you how important it is to pray for the poor souls in purgatory. Sadly, in time, many who once prayed fervently for the poor souls have become forgetful, going about their daily routine without any further thought for them. This is why Holy Mother Church wisely sets aside a month dedicated to relieve the poor souls in purgatory. The month starts with an opportunity to gain many plenary indulgences for them. Praying and offering sacrifices for the poor souls are not only acts of charity, but they're also in our own interest. St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori gives us much insight as to the suffering of the poor souls in purgatory and the mutual benefit which prayer for them carries for both them and those who pray for them. He says, The practice of recommending to God the souls in purgatory, that he may mitigate the great pains which they suffer, and that he may soon bring them to his glory, is most pleasing to him and most profitable to us. When these souls arrive in heaven, they will be sure to remember all who prayed for them. It's a pious belief that God manifests to them our prayers in their behalf, that they may also pray for us and obtain for us the divine graces. St. Catherine of Bologna, when she wished to obtain any grace, had recourse to the souls in purgatory, and her prayers were heard immediately. St. Catherine also said that when she prayed to those holy souls, she obtained many favors which she had not obtained when she had previously sought them through the intercession of the saints. St. Alphonsus Maria de Ligori continues by saying that it's our duty as Catholics to pray for the poor souls. Of all our neighbors, the holy souls are in greatest need of our assistance, for they're continually tormented in excruciating fires which are inconceivable to our minds, which penetrate into their very souls. Regarding the fire which should just suffer in purgatory, St. Thomas Aquinas says, it's the same fire that torments the reprobates in hell. The only difference is that the duration of hell is everlasting and that of purgatory has an end. St. Thomas adds that the least pain in purgatory surpasses the greatest sufferings in this life. The law of charity demands that we assist the needy. This extends even to strangers. Our obligation to do so is greatest regarding the poor souls in purgatory, many of whom are closely connected with us, perhaps our grandparents, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, relatives, and friends. We may remember them after their departure, but time lessens our sensitivity and our fervor in helping them too soon fades. My dearly beloved in Christ, as mentioned before, praying for the poor souls is an act of charity which affects both them and us. For such charity gives great pleasure to God who is anxiously awaiting their entrance into heaven. Thus, God will be most generous for us, to us, for the help we give these poor souls. St. Alphonsus adds that in return for our prayers and good works, these blessed souls will not neglect to obtain for us many graces from God, but particularly the grace of eternal life. He specifically says, I hold for certain that a soul delivered from purgatory by the suffrages of a Catholic, when she enters paradise, will not say to God, Lord, do not suffer to be lost. That person who has liberated me from the prison of purgatory and has brought me to the enjoyment of thy glory sooner than I deserved. Helping the souls in purgatory should also convey with it a sobering warning for us to avoid sin at all costs. Oftentimes, we may hear a person say, it's only a venial sin. We should not take any sin lightly. Many souls are suffering in purgatory because of venial sins and imperfections. God does not judge as we do. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways. My dear and beloved in Christ, St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori further explains that if we're given much grace, God requires much from us. With the bestowal of great and special graces, God demands a more faithful cooperation and will punish with extreme severity the least infidelity. 
This means that we can never become complacent in our service of God, thinking that we've done enough and are secure and that we have no need to advance in the spiritual life. We are almost abundantly blessed because we are traditional Catholics. However, this blessing carries with it a great responsibility to serve God faithfully. One important responsibility is to pray for the poor souls in in order to alleviate their tremendous suffering. Among the many sufferings of purgatory is the torture of the senses in relation to the sins one has committed. In Wisdom 11.17 we read, By what things a man sinneth, by the same also is he tormented. Yet as excruciating are the flames of purgatory and its torments, a far greater pain is endured because of being deprived of the vision of God. St. Alphonsus says that these souls are so vehemently attracted to union with God that when they're repulsed and sent to purgatory through their own fault, they experience so violent a pain that it would kill them instantly if death were possible to them. My dearly beloved in Christ, St. John Chrysostom adds that this pain of being deprived of God is a far greater pain for them than the pain of the senses. A further insight into the pains of purgatory is given by St. Ambrose, who tells us that on earth there's no greater agony than remorse of conscience caused by sin. There are examples on record of people who've died from the effect of this vehement sorrow. He adds that it's far more intense regarding the contrition of the suffering souls who fully understand the great malice of sin and who suffer because of having so frequently offended God for whom they now have a perfect love. The poor souls also experience a great pain of helplessness and desolation. As mentioned before, they can do nothing to help themselves while they remain entrapped in this state of purgation. They can only practice patience, resignation, and hope, all of which are not meritorious, for their time of merit is over. They languish in their prison and moan, groan, and weep, waiting for someone to help them. Holy Scripture describes their state with the words, the night hath come in which no man can work. They cry out for relief and assistance, but we cannot hear their cries. My dearly beloved in Christ, the Catholic Church relieves the suffering of the poor souls, establishing many devotions in their behalf, which he makes available for our practice. We must continue our prayers for these poor souls and not assume that they're immediately released. God has reserved to himself the right to accept entirely or in part the satisfaction offered for any soul in purgatory. This assistance depends upon his holy and adorable will and and perhaps in great measure upon the care of the soul to render herself worthy of the divine assistance during her earthly career. God will deal with us according to how we've shown mercy toward the faithful departed and others. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7.2, chapter verse 2, our Lord said, With what measure you give out, it shall be measured to you again. We can definitely assume that those who deliberately forget the faith that he part in this life will hereafter be deprived in purgatory the benefit of prayers and good works offered for them. My dearly beloved in Christ, it's in order to help these souls, it's absolutely necessary that we be in the state of grace. If we're not in the state of grace, all our actions for them and for ourselves are without merit. This shows why it's so important for us to always remain in the state of grace, not only for our own sake, but also for the sake of any for whom we pray. The Holy Sacrifice of Mass, along with the reception of Holy Communion, is the most valuable and meritorious of all means of gaining merit and assisting the poor souls. Other ways are praying the rosary, almsgiving, and offering sacrifices and good works even small ones on their behalf. It's noteworthy that our Lord rewards the charity we show towards those poor souls in purgatory by allowing them to assist us in our temporal wants. Bishop Colmar 
of Mayence writes, these destitute suffering souls not wait until they enter heaven to exhibit their gratitude towards their benefactors. Even while they languish in purgatory, they pray for their benefactors without intermission for the welfare of soul and body. Obtain for them recovery from disease, assistance in poverty, help in necessities, counsel and protection on journeys and in danger, preservation and increase of their temporal goods, aid them in the salvation of their souls, and above all, come to their relief in the agonies of death and before the judgment seat of God. St. Bridget declares in her revelations that she once heard a vision from the depths of purgatory pronouncing these words, May those be blessed and rewarded who relieve us in these pains. And another time she heard the cry, O God, show thy almighty power in recompensing a hundredfold those who assist us by their suffrages and make the rays of divine light to shine upon us. In a vision, the saint heard the voice of an angel saying, Blessed be those who come to the assistance of the poor suffering souls by their prayers and good works. St. Ambrose says that all we offer to God in charity for the dead is changed into merit for ourselves and we shall find it increased a hundredfold after our death. St. Margaret of Cortona at her death saw a multitude of souls whom she had delivered from purgatory form a procession to escort her into paradise. Father Rossignoli says that there's no doubt that the first favors of poor souls ask of the divine mercy on their entrance into the glory are for those who have opened to them the gates of paradise and that they'll never fail to pray for these, their helpers, in any need or danger. They will be their protectors in reverses of fortune, sickness, and accidents. A person who had been very charitable to the holy souls was in a terrible agony on her deathbed. She was assailed by gloomy fears when suddenly heaven seemed to open and she saw thousands of defenders fly to her aid, reviving her courage and promising her victory. She asked who they were, and they replied that they were souls she had delivered from purgatory and that very soon they would conduct her to paradise. A short time afterwards, she tranquilly expired, her heart filled with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.